Jay Kemp from Women of Boxing and Next Gen Champ. I'm at Team Current MMA in Suburban Crystal Lake with Sarah Curran, welterweight, ahead of her next bout, June 23rd, on the Hits Boxing Round 3's Rosemont Rumble. How are you doing today, Champ? I'm doing great, feeling good. Just got done with a great training session, so, you know, feeling 100. And how is camping going? Camp, this is the best camp I've put in so far. I'm very proud of myself with all the hard work I've put in. I've put in so much running, so much just grinding, so much one-on-one -on -one time with the coach, working on things to reestablish my game and make things a little bit different and change it up. And I, I'm so excited with the way things are going. Sounds like it. And I know you've been not just training here, but you've been all over the city of Chicago. Where have you been training at and who have you been training with? Um, well, I've been training at Sam Colonna's gym, getting sparring in. He um, always welcomes me to his gym, and I'm very uh, grateful for that. I get to train with Kim Carlson. She's a great amateur. I get to train with Mary McGee, uh, Jessica McCaskill from Body Shop Boxing. So I'm getting all kinds of great work in with some really good boxers and totally enjoying the atmosphere, and we're just a bunch of ladies grinding. And it's been your second fight. You've been really going savage here in training. But you have two monikers. Which is it, Savage, Sarah, or Little Tyson? I think I'll always be Little Tyson at heart, but, you know, Savage is my own. So I'm going to stick with the name Savage, but if you want to call me Little Tyson, I'm all for it. Well, seeing you quite a bit, I'll, I'll keep to my own, but, man, you've got some serious resemblances going there. So June 23rd, you're matched up with a successful box kickboxer, Amanda Ginsky, how did this bout come about? Well, I've been looking for a fight, and I know Bobby said that she was looking for a fight, so they matched us together, and it so happened to be we're the same weight class, and it just worked out perfectly, and I I'm, I'm love the matchup. I think it's going to be a great fight. We're two pretty much hometown girls, so, you know, we're going to bring in a good crowd and put on a good show. You just pointed it out, hometown, hometown girls. You're both from the far northwest suburbs. You're here in Crystal Lake, you're from McHenry, she's from Crystal Lake and trains in Huntley. This is going to be a great matchup. What do we expect to see? I see us going in there and doing our thing. I mean, uh, I know that she's probably preparing just as much as I am, so I think it's just going to be a great fight and that everybody, you guys should come out and see this fight because two hometown girls, who, how could you not love the vibe of that? What more can you say about that? Except for this is her debut. This is your second fight. She's not a pure debuter to the combat sport. She's a kickboxer. With only use of her hands in this match, what what do you know and what, what are you going to expect from her? I mean, I expect that she's fully prepared for the fight. Um, I don't know if she knows much about me. I, I can't say that I know much about her. All I know is that I've gotten all the proper sparring in for the fight, and I think that all the people that I've been working with have gotten me fully prepared for whatever kind of body style, whether it's a tall person, short person. We're just ready, and we're ready to fight. And she does have that height on you. How is Camp Ben in adapting to that scenario over your previous opponent? I mean, I wouldn't say I have a problem with people with height. I think uh, it's just more so having to adapt to me and, you know, how I feel about a fight. I'm going into this fight feeling totally prepared, as in last year, you know, I was getting married. No excuses. Should have been prepared. It was my pro debut. But this time coming around, I'm putting in the best camp that I've ever put in for any fight. And I think that with all my teammates that have been helping me, you know, I've got a lot of taller people. I even had Kim Carlson from Sam. She, you know, she's extremely tall. I have Mary McGee, she's taller than me. You know, I got a lot of people who have been there to help me out for this camp that are have a height advantage. I mean, let's I mean, come on. I'm always a shorty. So the height advantage is we're set. I hear you and I seen your attacks and that I I agree with you there. So what are we going to see come June 23rd from Savage Sarah? You're going to see a whole new fighter. You're going to see somebody who put in a lot of work and uh, improve themselves. You know, I, I see this as I'm redeeming myself of a loss. And, you know, it's not whether, like, oh, you know, Amanda's 
gonna come at me and this is, you know, I gotta get grinding hard. It's more so, no, Sarah needs to grind hard and prove to herself that she's a good boxer and she can get there and get it done. And that's, you know, this fight's for me, myself and I, and I think that's the best way to do it. Like, look at like Floyd Mayweather, he doesn't fight their fight. He fights his own fight. He makes sure he's prepared. So kind of like take that. There's no game plan. It's more so use my own game plan and be prepared this time, you know, be body, mind and soul prepared. Be prepared from, you brought it up, the previous fight, which was against undefeated Bertha Arso just almost a year ago. How does 2016 Sarah Curran to 2017 Sarah Curran, how is that different? It's completely different. I think I'm a different person right now. Um, I like who I am now, and I, I didn't really like how I approached things in 2016. So I even told myself, I made that promise to myself, 2017, come on, sir, pick yourself up, let's do this. Let's let's show people like what people see when I spar. Like Let's show them why you're special and you know what you have to offer to the table of boxing. And I think that's what I got to offer. I'm just ready to you know, show people my uh, true colors in the boxing world. What did you take away from that, that fight last year? I mean, you're always in a good spirit. You're still good spirits about that. What did you take away from that, from that fight? Um, honestly, I think I let myself get the best of me. I think I was my own worst enemy as far as that. Not taking anything from Bertha. She's a phenomenal fighter. I mean, look at her. What is she, 77 and 10? As an amateur, she was a well-established boxer. Me, my whole career is nine fights, so not taking anything away from her, but I think just me, myself, I didn't put what I could have put into it, and that's what I want to show right now is like, you know what, I, I got what it takes. And you've had some things, like you mentioned, that factored in, but now I just, I totally see a different Sarah in front of me in training and everything, so I expect to see some awesome, awesome things in front of a lot of hometown fans, and then I think you're growing fans left and right here as it is. How does that feel? feels awesome. The support that I'm getting from everybody, uh, family, friends, people from work, even people that don't even know, they're just like, hey, I want to see this girl fight. I heard about her. Like, you know how good that makes me feel? I, like, it truly hits home. So I'm grateful for it, and I always will be. That's awesome. So I have to ask you, Mayweather or McGregor? Oh, come on, man. It's all about the money. I got Mayweather. Come on. I agree. I, uh, I don't think there's any match to them. Any last words for fans, supporters, sponsors of Savage Sarah Kern? Yes, um, I'd like to thank my coach, Doug Mango, Jeff Curran. Uh, they've had me since I was 15. They've watched me grow and made me the fighter who I am. I'd like to thank my sparring partners here, my teammates, Alejandro, Corey Galloway, Tim Cho, the ladies in the city that have all helped me prepare for this, Sam Colonna for letting us use his gym um, to spar. I'd also like to thank my husband because he's helped me with so much stuff to help me prepare for the camp so I don't have to worry about stuff at home. And um, definitely thank Bobby Hitz for putting me on his show. You know, I'm really excited that he put me on such a phenomenal card. This is a really great card to be on and, you know, he's helping this lady out. And uh, yeah, so thank you for everybody who bought tickets and God bless, really appreciate your support. And for anybody who's in the suburban Chicago area, June 23rd, Rosemont Rumble, check this girl out. She's going to go to town on another local favorite. It's going to be a great show, and this is going to be one of the highlights. Good luck, champ. Thanks. Hey, guys, it's Carrie Rydell coming at you from Women of Boxing and Next Gen Champ. I am actually at Z's Martial Arts here in Huntley, Illinois, with Amanda Jinsky, who's making her professional boxing debut at the Dome at the Ballpark in Rosemont. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I wanted to talk to you a little bit about your professional boxing debut. I understand this is your boxing debut, but technically you went professional in January with kickboxing, correct? Yep, that is right. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, I've been um, actually working my kickboxing for probably the past five years now, and I've been fighting for WACO, which is the largest kickboxing organization in the world, and they've given me so many opportunities to travel the world and fight some of the best in the world, so we kind of, um, so we, I kind of found a home there, and I stuck with it. Uh, so after a while, you know, we wanted better competition, tougher competition, um, which we couldn't really get here in the United States, which is why we did so much, so much traveling. 
And then after a while, you know, we wanted to step it up. We wanted to take it to the next level, and I wanted to test myself as a person and as a fighter. So we said, let's do it. You know, let's take that leap of faith and let's go pro and, and you know see where see where it could take me. And what made you decide? Because you are known a little bit more as a kickboxer, mm -hmm. even though you've got plenty of amateur boxing fights. What made you take this particular match? Um, I think it's just to to test, like I said, to test myself as a fighter. You know, see where I'm at. Um, boxing was my first love. It's actually how I started. Um, so I have a boxing background um, in the beginning, and then I, it rolled into kickboxing. And I kind of want to get back to my roots, you know. And I, I kind of want to bring that the sport of boxing alive again, you know. Um, just get out there and fight and and see what happens. <laughs> That's amazing. As a female fighter in this industry, you've definitely paved your way. As I'm sure you understand it. It's hard being a female in the sport. What do you have to say to up and coming younger females who are fighting tooth and nail to just get to the point to be able to say they're going pro? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, never stop fighting for your for your dreams. You know, you have to live live your passion and, and do what you love. And despite anyone who tells you that you can't do it, you know, you have to take that and fuel that as fire and just and just keep going and. Um, that's kind of, you know, why I love what I do. I love that, the you know, the little girls in here, whether they're in karate or the junior kickboxing class, you know, they see me, you know, in here, you know, banging with the guys and hitting mitts with the guys. And um, uh, they see me as that strong, you know, female lead and um, that female role model. And I and I love that because it's it's not a man's sport, you know. It's, it's a man and a women's sport. <laughs> so, I mean, for any females out there, you know, just go for it. Never give up. Never quit. And just, and just keep striving to be the best that you can be. Extremely, extremely well said. What does it mean to you to have people look up to you as a female fighter? Um, it means a lot. I try not to get choked up. <laughs> um, it means a lot to me uh, because I work so hard in this sport. Um, this is what I do every day. This is this is my how I make my living. Essentially, you know, I wake up every day. I come in here and I work hard. And um, to see other little girls say, you know, Mom, I want to do that when I grow up, you know, it makes me feel real good, you know. It makes me feel that I'm doing something right and almost kind of makes you feel like, like a real-life superwoman in a sense. So, um, which, of course, we all know is unrealistic, but, you know, kind of brings it to life when you have that younger generation look up to you. I don't think it's unrealistic. I think you make it happen for yourself. <laughs> you, you hold the title very well. What Can you tell us about your camp? How, how is training going, your trainers? Um, camp's good. <laughs> camp is camp. Like I said, this is like I said, this is my job. I mean, we're constantly in the gym. We're constantly training. Um, if we're not training for a fight, um, it's fixing mistakes. It's getting better at we're, what we're already good at. You know, it's um, finding you know different scenario. You know, going through different scenarios and finding things that we need to fix. And so we're constantly in here. But when camp starts, you know, then you just turn up the notch. You know, everything's more intense. And um, it's been going great. I feel great, and uh, I'm definitely ready to fight. So, <laughs> that's great. Do you have anybody that you want to say thank you to in particular? Um, uh, the number one boss man I'm going to have to thank is my coach Rob Zabilski. Um, we've come a long way in this sport, and um, we've we've grown a closer. And um, I just feel bad the guy's got to put up with me every day. <laughs> I'm on my handful, but no, I um. I want to thank him first and foremost, you know, just for, for, you know, keeping me going and, you know, pushing me to be the best that I can be because without him, you know, I wouldn't be here. And, of course, to my friends and my family, you know, I give up a lot of time, um, personal time with my friends and my family and holidays and things that come along. And I have to say no because this is what, you know, keeps me going every day. So um, they're very supportive. And um, to any of my, I guess, my fans that I have out there, which I know there's a few here and there, I'm just thanking them. You know, I don't get to go out and go out to eat and go out and have drinks all the time, but they understand that. And when it comes around to fight time, they're the first ones to say, I got front row tickets. So thank, thanks to them as well. That's great. So you do this full time. How do you support yourself I know just going pro it's got to be difficult mm -hmm. yeah um it's rough you know I worked in logistics for eight years of my life and I had a steady income and uh, I quit my job to do this full-time so I do work a couple part-time jobs um, I'm a bartender it's the easiest way to make some cash you know I do network through my job and I love it it's kind of like my social life you know I don't need to drink or you know be in that scene but just to be able to interact with people I'm very personable 
you know, um, that's kind of I kind of got that <laughs> already. <laughs> that's kind of what I do to make, you know, my side cash. And then I also work at the vitamin shop part time. Um, I do. I'm very interested in obviously the health and the fitness industry, working on getting my um, personal training certification. So with that, I learn a lot of knowledge on vitamins and supplements. And um, that uh, particular job is only part time, but it has potential to grow into something um, career wise, you know, if once I'm done fighting and my body's like, nope, can't do it anymore, <laughs> but I'm going to be going for a long time. So it's just the two part-time jobs. And then, I mean, during the week, this is my job. You know, everyone's like, oh, I wish I could work out, you know, all day. It's not easy. You know, you wake up every day and you push your body to the limit. I'm here twice a day, you know, Monday through Friday. And then when the weekend hits, I'm working. So you could probably say that I work seven days a week, you know, and you have to keep yourself going and it's not easy. Yeah. What motivates you? What, what pushes you? What inspires you? Um, I don't know. It's just, um, it's just that strong passion for the sport. You know, um, a lot of it is, um, I want to make my coach proud. You know, I want to make my family proud and I want to do it for myself. You know, um, you know, people believe in me and they have faith in me. And, um, when I fight and they, people see me fight, I get such positive feedback and that's what keeps me really going, you know, to wake up every day and just to be something great. You know, it's not about money, it's not about TV or fame, you know, it's about becoming something great myself and traveling the world and just doing incredible things with my life that I can look back on and say that I did, you know. Absolutely, no regrets. Yeah. Right. Don't want to wake up one day yeah. and wish you had. Right. So congratulations, Thank kudos you. to you. <laughs> Sponsors, do you have anybody sponsoring you currently? Is there a place any interested sponsors can reach out to you social media wise? Um, I currently don't have any um, set sponsors. Um, right now we're just training and fighting and um, uh, you know part of the reason uh, to get out there and fight to get some exposure you know for people to see what I can do and um, you know how great of a fighter that I am so you know we welcome anyone who wants to contribute you know to the school or you know to my career that would be great uh, people can reach out to me on my fan page on Facebook um, that's my fight page it's uh, Amanda Jinsky fight page and then I also have an Instagram you can follow me there it's um, Amanda underscore Lene and that's spelled L-Y-N-A-E. So you can kind of see what I do day to day, my training. And, um, and it was Manda, not Amanda. Manda, that's right. So you can kind of see what I do day to day and just life and family, friends and things like that. So, so what are your expectations for this bout? Um, pretty much to uh, capture, capture more, um, more hearts of the people in Chicago. You know, um, I've been in the kickboxing scene. So for me, as an uppercomer in boxing, you know, I'm brand new and... Um, I want people to see what I can do. You know, I want to go out there. I want to fight hard. I want to, again, you know, gain something as a person and as a fighter. Uh, would I love to win? Yes. You know, do I believe I'm going to? Absolutely. Uh, I trust in my coach. I trust in my camp and in my training. Any last words for fans, supporters, anything? Yeah, just um, a simple thank you. Thank you for believing in me, having faith in me, and supporting me throughout my career. And um, you know, being a part of my, my pro debut, you know, buying tickets, and um, see you on June 23rd. Can people still buy tickets? Yes, they can. Um, you can buy them through me. Um, I will have them in hand up until Thursday, and then you can also buy them at the door. You got it here first. Thanks, guys. Good luck to you.